is rising. I hey, what's happening, Freedom House Online family? Pastor Josiah Silver here, and I just wanted to take a moment to say how much we love and value all of our online family that join us from really all over the world. It wouldn't be the same without you. I want to let you know that we're praying for you. We, we, we can't wait to see what God does in your part of the world. You're part of our Freedom House family. There are different ways for you to connect with us. Make sure to check out our connect groups that are via Zoom for our online family. You can also even serve and be part of our online digital dream team. And as always, we so appreciate your giving as you're sowing into this ministry. It allows us to bring you uh, the, the content that we do to all of our live uh, service equipment. So we appreciate your giving. Your giving is making a difference. It's changing the world. Stay connected with us. Hey, let me know where you're logging in from. Go to my social media, at Josiah Silva, at Marie Silva, my wife, or at Freedom House OC. Let us know where you're logging in from. We always love hearing from you. Love you, Freedom House family. Well, good morning, Freedom House Church. Come on, how are we feeling this morning? Oh, that wasn't very good. I said, how are we feeling this morning, Freedom House? Make a glorious noise unto the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, if you're watching online, let's praise the name of God this Valentine's Sunday. Come on, let's put our hands up. Let's go. One, two. Everybody sing out. I can see it clearly now. There's a reason for this sound. Somebody say it's Jesus. Ooh, yeah, yeah. The core of who I am is a risen son of man. Oh, but Jesus. Yeah, yeah. You're like no other. For your love is greater. And you are.
us on this Valentine's Day. Come on, why don't you look to somebody next to, you, next to you, tell them happy Valentine's Day. Say, I'm so happy to see you in the house of God. Well, hey, listen, as I mentioned before, we're coming back to our first love, Jesus. Come on, how many are thankful for the name of Jesus in this place? And listen, I believe the Father's love is in this place. And if you feel, you know what, a little bit discouraged during this season, maybe you're praying for something. Here at Freedom House Church, we have what's called our prayer partners. We just simply want to pray with you. They're coming up to my left and to my right. And if, you were, if you're in need of prayer or maybe you just want to pray for a job opportunity, maybe you're praying for a loved one, listen, whatever it is, we just want to come in agreement with you as we continue to praise the name of Jesus, as we continue to worship our God. Come on, let's, let's position our hearts today saying, Jesus, I believe that you can do anything, that there's nothing impossible that you cannot do, for his word declares that with God, nothing shall be impossible. Come on, why don't you give God a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, let's keep, let's keep worshiping him. Let's go. Father, we love you and we thank you, Jesus. Come on, would you open up your arms if you're physically able to say, Father, I surrender it all to you today. And every day moving forward, we sing to you, Jesus. We sing what you can do. 
Oh God of wonders, your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, you will do again. Cause there's no prison wall you can break through, no mountains you can move, all things are possible. And there's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can't save, all things are possible. The darkest night.
God of revival, pour it out. Oh, open up the ears this morning. I hear the chains hit the ground. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Oh, come on, open up our ears today, Jesus. Open up our ears. Let us hear the sound of victory this morning. Oh, we thank you, Lord.
together You are the defender Come on, can we declare that today? And when I thought I lost me You knew where I left me You reintroduced me to your Take a look at what's happening this week on FHTV. Be sure to head to our website where you can find one that best suits you. We love to build relationships with you because life is better with friends. Are you new to Freedom House and want to learn more about who we are? Then jump into Starting Point. Starting Point is an amazing time where you get to meet our lead pastors. You get to learn about them. They get to learn about you. You get to learn about where we started and more importantly, where we're headed as a church. We hope to see you there. Hey, Freedom House family, Pastor Josiah and Marie here. We want to invite you to our 2021 marriage conference. This year, we're calling it Rev. Why? Because we want to rev up the romance in your marriage. Woo! You know, that's right. <laughs> and so we want you to register. Listen, all of our marriages every year need to be tuned up and worked on. Right. God wants to take your marriage to another level. I know because of all that has happened during the pandemic and in our world, a lot of marriages have taken moments. And so we want you to come and don't worry. This it's going to be a, a, a session, a conference of building your marriage, speaking into it. It's going to be a time of healing and a powerful time. It's February 19th and 20th, Friday night and Saturday morning every year. It's amazing. Make sure to register because it sells out. Come on, put the romance back in your marriage, ladies. Don't miss out on this. Get your man to come. Come on, fellas. <laughs> register for Rev Marriage Conference. See you then. On February 28th, we'll be having our child dedication. Be sure to head to our website where you can sign up for either our Costa Mesa or Fullerton campus. 
Our 2020 giving statements are now available. Feel free to go to freedomhouseoc.org to get yours today. So that's it for our FHTV. To stay up to date with all things Freedom House OC, you can follow us on our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like us on Facebook as well as stay up to date with our lead pastors at Josiah Silva and Marie Silva. From us to you, God bless. God bless. Good morning, Freedom House. Happy Valentine's Day. Great to see you all in the house of God and online. I'm Pastor Louie. I'm the Fulton Campus Pastor. And it's my honor just to be here with you and just to welcome you here. Just like want to welcome all the new guests as well. If you're in the building, so honored to have you online. Let us know you're new online. Just put first time here and we're going to shout you down and greet you down. And we're going to say happy Valentine's Day to you in the, in the chat as well. But come on, Freedom House, give it up for the first time guests in the building and online. One of the things that we like to do is we like to invite our first time guests out to a place that we call Starting Point. It's a, it's a meet and greet with our lead pastors. We get to meet them face to face over Zoom and they tell you about how Freedom House started, where we're headed, but most importantly, how you can grow in the things of God. So we'd love to invite you out to that. If you're new to Freedom House, all you gotta do is text WELCOME1 to 888 You'll see it on the screens for you if you're online. It's a one-time text. We're not gonna bother you. We're not gonna spam you. We just wanna make sure we send you the correct links uh, so that you can be a part of this meet and greet uh, and meet Pastor Sai and Pastor Marie. I'm so excited to have you guys in here. And if you're in the building, one more thing. Uh, if you're in the building, we have red bags. Go ahead and take that red bag. If you're here for the first time, that's for you. We made them just for you. So, so don't, don't feel like, man, uh, what's this? It's for, it says new guests. Should I take it or should I not? No, take it because that is for you. Come on, free, Freedom House, welcome to the first time guests again. Such, such a great day to be in the house. I love how we're in the, the Rebuilt series. I know that today is actually the last day of the Rebuilt series, and we're about to jump into a giving in just a second, but our Rebuilt series has is, is just been amazing, and I'm looking forward to what the next one is. It's going to be just as powerful, I already know, but I love how Pastor's message uh, last week was the power of no, and, and, and how we was talking about that, and he said, the right no makes, the, makes way for the right yes. Your no's make, make way for the right yes, and I find that so prevalent to be as we were building in uh, 2021 because we're rebuilding marriages, we're rebuilding our homes, we're rebuilding our careers, we're rebuilding our finances. And I know we all wanna have those things rebuilt and those things, re, uh, those things blessed. And in every area, we're gonna have to say no to certain things as we build. Now, when it comes to our finances, there's certain things that we're gonna have to say no, no to so that we can say yes to our giving and to our tithing. Now, how does that look like? For some, maybe when we make out the budget, we might have to say no to saying, you know what, the tithe, I'm not going to put it in second or third or last. I'm going to have to put that first so that I can say yes to it first. Or maybe it's maybe you're shopping for a car and you're looking for a car and, and you're looking at the packages and you're looking to get the premium package, but you might have to say no to that because maybe you know if you get that premium package, you're going to be taken out of what, what you're supposed to be giving towards your tithe. And if you say no to that, you can say yes to the tithe. You might be wondering, well, why is he pressing me with this? Why is he saying these things? It's because I know what the tithe does. The tithe is the foundation for your finances to be blessed in 2021. Can I get an amen? So there's certain things when it comes to our finances that we have to say no so that we can say yes to the tithe. And it's important that we understand this because Jesus said something about the tithe. And I'm going to put it up there for you on Matthew 23, 23. This is what Jesus said. His words, not mine. I'm just reiterating it to you. You should tithe. Say it with me. One, two, three. Yes. Yes, yes. Come on for the wrestling fans out there, right? <laughs> but you should tithe, yes. Jesus said that we should tithe. Now, for me, when you say no to what Jesus says yes to, you will lead yourself into a point of frustration. Now, when it comes to building our finances in 2021, it's important for us as believers to know, okay, how do I do that? What's the biblical principle behind that? And it all starts with the tithe so much so that Jesus said yes to it. So we should be saying yes to the tithe because the tithe bring forth, uh, bring forth uh, blessing into our lives as well. So it's not just about, uh, it's about putting Jesus first, putting God first, but it's also about blessing the rest of your finances. How, how many of you are looking to rebuild your finances in 2021? I think that's everybody. How, how many are you looking to add strength to your finances in 2021? I know I am. Let me tell you this. This is what the blessing of God through the tithe brings you. Proverbs 10, 22, it says, The blessing of the Lord brings true riches, and he adds no sorrow to it, for it comes as a blessing from God. The tithe keeps you in a place 
of the of protection and of blessing, a blessing upon your finances that brings no sorrow to it, no stress to it, no worry to it. Why? Because the Bible says it's a blessing from God. Can I get an amen? I know I've been in positions where I try to try to you know work things out financially on my own without the tithe. There's a moment where I wasn't a tither. And when I started tithing, that's when I started to realize, man, this is where the blessing's at. And I want to be under the blessing of God, so I'm going to say yes to the tithe. When you bring God the tithe, he will keep you safe and he will add no sorrow to you. The tithe is 10% of what you make, in case you're wondering. And when you bring that to God, you are saying yes to what he has already said yes to and releasing blessing out of obedience uh, to God into your life. Rebuild, restore, restore. Revive The right no makes way for the right yes as we say yes to the tithe. Allow me to read you those two scriptures one more time. Matthew 23, 23. Jesus said, you should tithe yes. In Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord brings true riches and he adds no sorrow to it for it comes, to it, for it comes as a blessing from God. For it comes as a blessing from God. There's four easy ways that you can give. If you're in the building, we have giving stations in the front and in the back. You could also do it online. If you're online, just go to our website. You can give safely and securely on there. Just follow the promptings. You could also do it by mail. If you choose to do that, go ahead and do that. But the best way to do it, come on, it, uh, the easiest way I should say to do it is, the, is by doing it through text. It's my preferred method. It's our, most of our preferred method. All you got to do is text FH Fulton to 77977. And uh, you can do it that way. You get a text reply back from our app called Pushpay. And you could also set up your recurring giving. Some of us need to say no to like, I'm just going to give when I give and say yes to recurring giving and set that up for you. So you make sure you're giving your tithe every month. So you could do it that way. That's safely and securely right there. And, uh, and I'm blessed. Jesus says say yes to the tithe. I'm saying yes to the tithe. And my prayer is that you guys say yes to the tithe as well. Allow me to pray for your giving. Father in heaven, I thank you for our 9.30 a.m. service. I pray blessing upon them, Father. We come in alignment with your word that says uh, yes to the tithe, Lord. So we say yes to it as well. And we put you first out of obedience, Father. And out of our obedience, you release a blessing. And I thank you for that blessing. Bless your people. Bless your givers. Bless your tithers. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen. Come on, give God a hand clap. And I'd like to invite your feet as we worship God through our giving. Your word, 
storm in my key Forever you remain I want your heart Yeah, yeah, I know Every voice that you don't say And I fall To my knees I finally surrender I surrender my life to your will Send your Good morning, good morning. It's so good to have you with us in church this morning. If you join us for the first time, my name is Josiah Sloan, the lead pastor of Freedom House Church, and we are one church that meets in three locations, in the city of Fullerton, Costa Mesa, and also live online. Would you clap and welcome all of our church family? We're live with our Costa Mesa and online and Fullerton and, and more campuses to come, right? I got two amens. Come on, more Freedom House locations to come in Jesus' name. So good. But it's so great to have you this morning. And like I said, it's Valentine's Day. So um, if your honey brought you to church on Valentine's Day, he automatically gets extra points. Come on, fellas, right? He brought you to church. That is extra points times 10. That's right. If you're dating and he brought you to church, he's a keeper. Just kidding. Come on now, all right? And if you're single, listen, you are not a half looking for a half. You are not, I don't even like the word single. Listen, you're already taken by God. You got, per, you got destiny, you got purpose. Come on now. I'll be like, oh, nigga. And let me just throw this one at you. Okay, you know me, I always got to throw dating advice. You'll like this one, Costa Mesa. Better to be single than with the wrong person. I got a few amens. All right, cool. <laughs> Trust me, all right. Like, well, it's Valentine's Day. I need a Valentine Day. No, what you need to do is focus on Jesus. That's what you need, all right. But, but welcome to church, and I just want to throw this out there before I jump into my messages. Um, it is Valentine's Day, and we're all about love, of course, but um, our marriage conference is coming up, and I just want to say, if you have not registered for our marriage, where are all the married folks? That's all right. We like to clap. Come on, Coast Mesa Online. So marriage conference, 
Folks, just want to throw it out there is uh, register, get to our marriage conference. We are eclipsing 70% full and it sells out every year. And then I got people asking, can I get a ticket? Can I get it? And then we got to scalp them outside. And I'm just joking. People want to get a ticket, register you and your, your wife. Um, it's going to be beautiful. And every year it's a powerful time. And I always say this, people spend thousands on a great wedding, but then don't invest on a great marriage. God doesn't want you just to have a great wedding day. He wants you to have a great marriage. And we're going to talk about equipping you biblically how to do that. So that's happening next Friday. We're less than five days away. And uh, it sells out every year. So just register and say for Valentine's Day, I registered us for the marriage conference. Or say I registered you. No, I'm just joking. I registered us for the marriage conference. It's going to be good. Awesome. Well, um, they're setting up my props over here. Um, today, I, I want to minister here an illustrated message to wrap up our the Rebuild Life series. We're going to start a new series next Sunday, but today, I really feel God has a word for us. So if you grab your Bibles, go with me to Nehemiah chapter 4. As you remain standing, Nehemiah chapter number 4, we're going to read verse number 2. If you didn't get a message out there when you walked in, our ushers will give that to you. But it's the points to my message as well as the verses we'll be reading together. Nehemiah chapter number 4, we're going to go to verse number 2. And then we're going to jump to Nehemiah chapter 6, and we're going to read verse 15 through verse 16. And um, again, shout out to our online campus people logging in from everywhere. Press the share button on Facebook, invite all your friends to church, and get the YouTube link and text it to 10 friends, and let's have Bible study. You ready for the word? Let's get into it. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 2, the word of God reads like this. It says, and in the presence of his associates and the armies of Samaria, Sanballat, which was the enemy to Nehemiah, this is what he said. He mocked the people of God and he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore the wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from the heaps of rubble? Then I want you to notice this word burned as they are. The picture is these stones were burned, they were broken, they were dismayed. And as we've been learning in our series of the rebuilt life, that this is going to be a year of rebuilding, restoring, and reviving, is there's a lot that we need to rebuild. And we're liking it to Nehemiah's story where the walls had been broken. Well, if you go to Nehemiah chapter 6, we've been studying this, but I want to bring it here to the kind of the climax of the movie. Nehemiah 6.15 says this. It says, so the wall was completed on the 25th of Elul in 52 days. How many believe God's going to complete a work in your life? Do you believe God's going to do a work in your life? Come on, say amen. All right. This Bible says he's faithful. He says they brought it to completion. Watch verse 16. When all of our enemies heard about this, the surrounding nations were afraid and they lost their confidence. I want you to notice here that when God did the work in their lives, the enemy lost their confidence. Did you know your godly progress has the ability to frustrate the devil? In other words, you can give the devil a bad day. You can frustrate the devil. And some of you, you've made the devil so mad and that should make you very happy, all right? They said they were afraid, they lost their confidence. In other words, they're disheartened, humiliated because they realized that this work, someone say this work, this work had been done with the help of our God. This is not a work of man. This is a work of of God. Come on, say amen to that right there. So it's help of God. Now, they completed in 52 days. And as we're believing God for things to be rebuilt, restored, and revived, how it's going to happen, it's going to take place brick by brick. Today, the title of my message is exactly that, brick by brick. Let's pray one more time. Would you bow your head? Father, I thank you this morning because we approach you, God, as learners of your word. That's what a disciple is. It's a learner. And every Sunday, every Wednesday, we come because, God, we want to learn what your word has to say for us. And, God, I'm asking you that today you would teach us the principles of your word, that you would show us, Holy Spirit, how to rebuild brick by brick. Can these burned and broken stones live? I believe they can. And, God, we're going to do it brick by brick. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says amen. Come on, give God one more clap. You may be seated. And just tell the person you came with, tell them, say brick by brick. Just tell them that. Say brick by brick. That's right. 
I want to talk to you today about rebuilding brick by brick. And I really believe this is a way that God works through the Bible. And, and I really want to show this today because one thing I've learned through pastoring after a decade, I've pastored for over a decade now, gone 12 years, and, and uh, come on, amen. Come on, somebody, to God be the glory. But what I've learned about pastoring for over a decade is that God works, watch me now, in people's lives in steps. God works in and through people's lives brick by brick. Say with me, say brick by brick. <laughs> now this is important and I want to talk about this today because I see oftentimes a lot of people get discouraged because they don't see God do the big thing in one day. But God is into doing it brick by brick. And I want to give us that perspective today. And I think if you grab, I, I think, I know that if you grab this perspective, it will be impossible for you to get discouraged because I know that you'll see the progress. Say amen, okay? Brick by brick. And the proof of that is even in creation. When God created, you know, everything, Remember that in Genesis, the creation of the first seven days, he created everything in steps. He didn't just, you know, one day snap his fingers and the world came to be. But day one, day two, day three, day four, everything was in steps. Because God creates and he works through people in steps, brick by brick. And it's important that we understand this because all of us last year went through some steps. Come on now. <laughs> all of us sitting here have gone through some twists, some turns. We've all gone through different things, and, and oftentimes, if you're like me, have you ever just wanted to press the fast forward button? Okay, you ever been like, let's just get this over with, and let's just go for it, and you're like, let's just move on, and, and, and we, I know many of us maybe perhaps were frustrated or agitated at how slow certain times go, but <laughs> come on now, right? But, but we need to recognize that even in those times that God is still working, even when it's not as fast as we think. It takes every step. And I'll go as far as say this. God actually enjoys not the pain that we have in every step, but God enjoys seeing us progress step by step. And the best analogy I can give you is, uh, is with my kids. You know, I have, I have four kids. Um, two years ago, we had the final addition to the Silva family. It was the fourth child, four quarters in a game. We won. Um, amen. It's over. No overtime in this one, okay? And uh, that's it. We are done. Four kids. And, and uh, my son, David King Silva, and uh, he was born. And, and it's kind of interesting because now we're back to like the days of the first, you know, like the first, uh, you know, word and the first uh, poopy diaper, you know. And then after that, you're like this. Anyway, but you're like, it's just the, the, all the first stuff. But one of the things that, that is always big is to celebrate is this first step, you know, when the babies take their first step and, and the little chubby leg is kind of, you know, <laughs> doing the, the, the funky chicken, you know, and, and he's walking. And, and the first step, we celebrate that first step. And we're like, he's taking his first step. Yeah, he said his first word. And, and every step is a celebratory moment. And, and, and I believe in many ways that's how God is in our lives, that God looks at every step brick by brick, every moment, and God celebrates those moments. And I think sometimes we get discouraged because, well, yeah, but I'm not running yet. Or, yeah, I'm not driving yet. Or, yeah, I don't, I'm not metaphorically at that place yet. And when God is saying, I know you're not there, but I'm celebrating the, the, the moments that you're growing. I don't know who I'm talking to, but welcome to church. You're in church. And for some of you, that step is being here this morning. Come on, give God a clap for all those that came to church. Come on, Costa Mesa online. Like, I don't expect my son David, my youngest son, to do what my son Judah does. I don't expect that. And I think sometimes people in their Christianity, they compare their, their, their first step with someone else's step. And they're like, well, I don't pray like them or, or my, you know, I'm not like that. And it's like, listen, I know you're not like that. God loves you where you're at. You got to keep building. Someone shout brick by brick. You got to keep building this thing brick by brick. And you can't compare your walk with God to, with someone else. You can't. That's why, that's why if you're someone who's been walking with God for some time, don't bully anybody with your faith. Encourage them. Okay, you know Christian bullies, like, how come you don't pray good enough? It's like, stop it. 
What's wrong with you? You know what I mean? Like, encourage somebody. Say amen. You know? Like, we're to build one another up. Christian bullies. I made that up. All right. Anyway, so. <laughs> all right. They all met him. Come on now. You know, you know, Sister Sandpaper. Anyway, so, so we need to believe God for these things. Now, the massive thing that you're believing God for. How many believe in God for big things? I know you're believing God. That's why you came to church and I know we're a, we're a fiery bunch and when you get to heaven, Freedom House is gonna be in the loud section. You know what I mean? Like the loud meter. Like we're fired up, but, but in all honesty, are you believing God for, for big things? I pray you are. Are you believing God to rebuild some things? I, I know you are. I, that's why, why you read your word. That's why you serve God. But I've gotta tell you that the big thing is gonna come in small steps. It's gonna come brick by brick. And I want to give you this perspective. And listen, I, this is my opening thoughts, and we're going to get to the context of the verse here. I am a person of faith. I believe in the miraculous. I know God can move mountains. But listen to me. It doesn't always happen overnight. That's real talk right there. Like, I know some of you right now are like, what? But I'm telling you, because I've seen so many people come to the altar and then go home and get discouraged because it, the mountain's still there. Or they get discouraged because it's not all fixed in one moment. You came up to the altar, you did a twirly dance, you raised your hand, and you're like, but God, I went that one Sunday. Why is it not completely done? It's because God is building you brick by brick, brick by brick. Say amen. And we got to celebrate those brick by brick, you know, moment by moment, step by step. So you might be sitting here today and say, Pastor... You're talking about a year to, uh, of rebuild, restore, and revive. I've been coming for seven weeks, and I don't see it all completed. <laughs> brick by brick. Brick by brick. Brick by brick. And, you know, that's how you build a marriage. That's how you build your family. That's how you build God's call on your life. You know, my wife. I, I built her brick by brick. That's why she's a brick. Just kidding. Come on. Come on. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm here reading you. Some of y'all don't even know what that is. What song is that? Don't worry about it. It's just focus. <laughs> All right. She's mighty, mighty. It's Valentine's Day, all right? It's Valentine's Day. I'm having fun, all right? Okay. <laughs> all right. That's for later. So we'll save that for the marriage conference. So how is it going to happen? Write this down, point number one. It's go how does restoration happen? How does the rebuild happen? One brick at a time. Say what we say, one brick at a time. If you're married, tell your spouse, one brick at a time. Come on, if you're believing God for a big dream, say, Lord, one brick at a time. One brick at a time. How do you build that family, that marriage, those children? How do you develop your walk with God? How do you develop that godly business you're believing, that dream? How do you complete that degree? How do you get out of debt and be free so you can start building an inheritance and not, as the Bible says, don't be a slave to the lender, but you, you will not be a borrower. You shall be a lender in Jesus' name. Come on. Is you build it brick by brick. Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 15 here. Let's go to the context and the verses we just read. The scripture said this, and we can all celebrate it, but the Bible says, so the wall was completed. Now that is a place to shout, praise God, thank you, Lord. I'm believing for the day where you complete the good work in my life, and, and that's fantastic. But the Bible then tells us it was completed, and it says in 52 days. And I love that the Bible gives us the time. The point here is it took time. The point is it didn't happen overnight. It happened over the course of 52 days. Now, this was a remarkable, uh, 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 you know, a completion to do this in 52 days was a remarkable thing. But the point is, is it still took time. The idea was that this wasn't just a one-time one prayer, one-time day. I worked real hard for eight hours, and, and how come it's not done? It's, it took time. Now, I'm not telling you today that it's going to take 52 days to repair what you're believing God for. Maybe it's going to take 52 weeks. I don't know. And you're like, no, Lord, maybe 52 years. And you're like, no, Lord. Right? I don't know what it's going to take, but I will tell you this, that when God starts to work in your life, he is going to complete it. Come on, say amen. And it's going to happen brick by brick. Say amen. 
You see, it's important because it happens now. Let's, let's read like, it takes time, but God loves seeing the work begin. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 10, New Living Translation, the first part of the verse says this, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. This was one of my, my key scriptures when we began Freedom House, and this is one of the key scriptures when I started my first you know, business and everything. Is I was like, God, I'm not going to be afraid to start small. I'm not going to be afraid to start small. Let me just talk to the young people for a moment. Don't be afraid to start small, okay? Don't, 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 don't think that you're going to start, you know, making 100 grand a year with the corner office. You know, don't think that it's just going to take place at the high level. you got to be willing to grind and work your way from the bottom to the top. i got no amens because now and day everybody wants to be an overnight star. Everybody now and day wants to be a blow up their YouTube channel. Everybody like, how come I'm not already blowing up? How come everybody don't already know about me? Okay, because you're 22. Come on. And God is still building your life. And you got to be committed to building brick by brick. Say Amen. So I love how the Bible says, do not despise the days of small beginning, but the Bible actually says, watch this last sentence, the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. You see, humanity claps at your completion, God claps at your beginning. See, our culture claps when you get the degree, God claps when you apply. Our culture claps when you're finally put together. God claps when you finally say, God, I want to start on this journey. Come on, somebody. Come on. That's why you got to clap when people are still broken, but they're on their journey. That's why you got to clap when people are beginning, because heaven says, I rejoice when the work begins. But if you're waiting for this to start, you're tuned into the wrong thing. I love this. Like I said, it's Zechariah 4.10. For the Lord rejoices. He rejoices. That means God's like, yes, they're willing to start. You see, giant things happen in little steps. Small steps lead to big results when you trust God. Now, I love what Psalms 37 and verse 23 says in the New Living Bible. It says it like this. It says, or the Living Bible, I apologize. The steps of a good man are directed by the Lord, and he delights in each step they take. God delights in the steps that you take. You see, God loves that because when you invite God into your life, you're inviting him, watch this word now, in the process and the progress. The process and the progress. And God loves working with the process and the progress because when you're about the process and the progress, you're about God, I wanna build this brick by brick and I wanna build it not quick, but I want to build it right. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're laying down the groundwork here. It's going to help somebody. I feel, I feel the power of God. Is, is when Nehemiah was building, the enemy tried to rush Nehemiah to build it fast. And sometimes we sacrifice quality for speed. When God is about quality, not just completion and speed. Nehemiah chapter four and verse two. Let's read this one more time here. We're going to the context says, and in the presence of associates, the army of Samaria, he said this, what are those people Jews trying to do? Will they restore the wall? Will they offer their sacrifices? And then look what he said. He says, will they finish in a day? Will they finish in a day? Do you see that there? What he was trying to do is he would say, can you finish this all in a day? He was trying to get them to rush. And let me tell you this, don't ever let people rush your rebuild. Don't let people rush your rebuild by you comparing your rebuild to somebody else's rebuild. And, and, and what happens is he tried to rush them. And Sambalat was like, was like, can you finish it in a day? Come on, try to do it all overnight. And sometimes the voice of the enemy will try to discourage you because it doesn't change overnight. But what you got to say in this season is I'm not trying to rush it. I'm trying to rebuild it right. I want to build this the right way. And I want to make sure that each place goes where it's supposed to go. Say, just write this down. Don't rush the rebuild. Just write it down somewhere. Don't rush the rebuild. Why do we not rush the rebuild? Here's why. Because when you're in a place of brokenness, you have to assess. Assess. Put, put all these bricks, if you can, in the, in the camera shot so they can see it online. And, and they can, they, thank you. Yeah, let's stay on that one if we can. It's, it's, you have to assess each brick. 
Say, don't rush the rebuild. And here's the question that I want to answer many of you are thinking in your mind right now. Is God, why do you build brick by brick? Like, why can't I say, Father, rebuild everything. And then I do a twirly and I turn back around and it's all done. <laughs> you know? Right? Like, why can't you do that, Lord? Because God, watch me now, wants you to assess, not live in it, but to assess each brick and to work each brick to where it's supposed to be. Because what God is into, watch me now, is step by step, brick by brick. And many of us, where we're at currently in our life is we are in the rubble. Now, don't point, but do you know anybody in the rubble? <laughs> You're like, that's why I came to church, Pastor Josiah. Do, do you know anybody who's in rubble? And when we're in rubble, the first reaction is to run out of the rubble or to just try to put it back as fast as possible and, and let's just hurry up and get this over with and let's just, God just, and God's like, no, we are going to rebuild right because what got you in trouble last time is you ran into it so, see, I, come on, this is gonna, what got you in trouble last time is you just threw it all together and it, it looked good, but it had no right foundation and it wasn't built right, so it got torn down and now you're back to rubble when God wants to bring you to revival. Who am I talking to today? Come on, somebody. Who wants to bring it back? So, so, so the enemy makes fun of him, but God wants you to assess each one. And what happens is when we are in this phase, we oftentimes get a little bit discouraged because we see what each brick is. It reminds us of, you know, it reminds us of the failure. It reminds us of the hurt. And we try to get healed by not looking at this. And so we try to just say, well, you know, I, I, I don't want that. I don't want that hurt. I don't want that failure. I don't want that loss. I don't want all that. And so the warfare is in the rush. The warfare isn't just trying to put it where it is. And so we get discouraged, you know, of where it's at. But God wants to show us something more powerful. And what he wants to show us is that every one of these bricks still got a purpose. Because watch Nehemiah 4.2, the Bible says this. It says, will they finish the day? Can they bring the stones back to life? And he says, from those heaps of rubble, as burned as they are, some will say burned bricks. You ever been burned before? <laughs> You're like, yeah, I got their name and how much they owe me. Just kidding, come on. <laughs> You're like, I know exactly. And they're over there. I see them on Facebook. And they're over there partying. You owe me, me $100,000. Anyway, okay. so you ever been burned before? Okay. Of course we all have. We've all been burned. We've all been, been let down. We've all been hurt. We've all been these moments. But I want you to notice that the burnt bricks were burnt. I want you to notice that these were broken. I want you to notice that the enemy was making fun of their burnt situation, their broken down situation. But what is so powerful about this, watch this now, is they rebuilt the wall not with new bricks but with the burnt bricks. Let that sink in. They rebuilt with the burnt bricks. They rebuilt with the brokenness. They rebuilt with the hurts. They rebuilt with the defeat. They rebuilt with the loss. They rebuilt with the letdown. They didn't say, you know what, we need new bricks in order to rebuild something. They said, no, something can still be done from this brokenness because God can still use burnt bricks. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you think you got to exchange the brick called your life, the brick called your mind, your marriage, your family, but God says, I can still use the burnt bricks if you let me rebuild your life. Someone shout, he still uses burnt bricks. Write this down, point number two. God can use burnt bricks. And here is the difficulty of our walk with God. Because the question is, stay focused here, is can God use my burnt bricks? Can God use my burnt bricks? Or are my burnt bricks so far gone? 
can they bring? That's what he said in Nehemiah 4.2. Let me move this so that we can see here. This is what they said. They said, can they bring these stones back to life? Which proves to us what this was all about. It was about bringing them back to life. And the question is, can these burnt bricks live again? Can they be put back together? And what happens is most people or the enemy tries to get you to be in the midst of these bricks. And when you look at these bricks, people often sit on what could have been. And they say, you know, if I just had made that decision instead, if I hadn't gone there, you know, if I would have just not replied to that text, if I would have just not said that, if I would have not chosen that, and instead of rebuilding, we sit among the stones. We sit among the stones. We rehearse what could have been, what should have happened. You see, Nehemiah fixed it in 52 days. Someone say it took time. But the problem was there, historians tell us, for 100 years. For 100 years, nobody had fixed the bricks. That means their grandfather sat here. Someone's going to get it. That means the daddy sat there, their mama sat there. That means the cousins, the cousins sat in there. That means the, 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 the aunties and the unks and, and come on, unk. And that means and, and the suegras and, and the in-laws and the outlaws, come on, all sat there. That means they spent Christmas there. That means they learned how to, how, how, to, how, how to have, you know, Thanksgiving amongst dysfunction. That means they just, they just learned to sit among the stones. But then, oh, someone's going to get it. I'm telling you, this message, you need to share this, replay this. This is the way God showed it to me, and I pray you get it, and you're never the same. I'm not just talking about Sunday. I'm not just talking about Valentine's Day. I'm talking about for the rest of your life that I'm going to refuse to just sit in the stones. Put in the chat, say, don't just sit in the stones. <laughs> don't, stay, don't just sit stoned. I mean, don't just sit in the stone. Some of y'all get that later. <laughs> but every once in a while, you get a Nehemiah. Every once in a family lineage, you get a Nehemiah. You, you, you get, you get a, a man or a woman who says, ¿Sabes qué? You know what? I don't want to live. I feel the power of God. I need about 10 people intercessing praying for me right now. I need about 10 people praying for me right now because I feel Costa Mesa. I feel online. I feel God is stirring somebody who Nehemiah, the Bible says, began to weep. Go back and listen to the whole series. He weeped over the condition of the wall. He weeped over the condition of the stones. He weeped. Why did he weep? He weeped because he's, they only saw what they can see, but Nehemiah saw what God saw. And he weeped because he says, you know what, God, I know that you can change this. God, I know that you can rebuild this. God, I know that you're the God of the rebuild, of the restore, of the revive, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And what has been broken in my family for three generations, what has been broken in my family? family from three that the devils that have entrenched themselves in my bloodline I am going to change my last name Silva will not be one of addiction and brokenness and divorce and let down we will not live amongst the stones but we will rebuild restore and reap who am I to you want to give God some praise if you believe the stones can shout hallelujah 
Tell someone I'm not just sitting on the stones. My God. Come on, who's this? If this is talking to somebody, just say, that's me. Come on, say amen. I'm going to raise my hand too. So people sit in guilt and condemnation in the stones. Because now they're in an atmosphere to rebuild. But they live in regret. You're free now. You're free by the blood of Jesus. You have been given authority to refuse the devil. Say amen. Amen. To frustrate the devil. (laughs) It's going to get gooder and gooder. Say God uses burnt stones. So he sits there and he says, God, we're going to rebuild this. And God wants to show you, listen to me now, he can still use what is broken. Now, this is important because, number three, write this down, because you got to trust God with each brick. Someone say, trust God with each brick. Because we think, because I'm still struggling, I can't rebuild. But I'm going to tell you, you need to get your struggling self. You need to get your mind battle self. You need to get your hurt, defeated self and say, I am not going to live with broken down walls anymore, but I'm going to rebuild it. Come on, somebody. I'm going to trust God with these stones. So you you gotta assess and say, God, what do you want me to do with these stones? What do you want me to do? And I'm gonna tell you what God wants you to do. Philippians 1 6. So scripture says, being confident of what? This. Someone say this. Point to yourself and say this. Point to your mind, say this. Point to your heart and say this. Point to your kids and say this. Come on, point to your spouse and say this. Point to your your checkbook and say this. Point to your phone and say definitely this. Come on, somebody. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you. It was not you, it is God who wants to do it in you and through you. Come on. See, I'm talking to somebody of why you feel a desire to serve God even when other people don't. I'm talking to somebody who feels, why why do I want to change what other people don't want to change? Why am I trying to live different than other people? It's because God is doing a good work in you. He's doing a good work in you. And I'm not, don't judge me like, well, that's why you're a bad work. No, God, I'm a good work. I'm building different. Go back to Philippians 1, 6. It says, he who began a good work in you, watch this now, will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ, until we're all in heaven. But the Bible says, watch this now, he will carry it. He will carry it. He will carry it. He will carry it. You want to know how God's going to carry it on to completion? Through you. Because we like to say, okay, God, carry it. Carry it. Carry it. But he began the good work where? And he wants you to. uh, To carry it. To carry it on to completion. God, what do you want to do with this hurt? God says, I don't want you to carry it. I want you to carry it on to completion. Where should this go? God says, put it on the wall. But I I want to get rid of the hurt. God says, put it on the wall. Carry it on because that hurt is going to complete you. Somebody's going to get it. And what about this brick, Lord? Carry it. This goes right there. 
But what about this failure? Can we get rid of this, Lord? Just, let's just, let's chuck it. God says, no, carry it. But God, can we use different stones? Because I don't want to be reminded of those stones, Lord. Can we come? Come on. God says, we're going to use the same burnt stones. The same ones that were burnt the same days that you were defeated, the same failures, the same losses, the things that you wish never happened. God says, I wish it never happened either, but we're going to use it. And God says, I want to show you that I can use what is still burned. Somebody say rebuild. Put it on, put it on the wall. Lord, surely you don't want to use defeat. Surely my dumb decisions caused me to fail. Surely, Lord, everybody knows about my, my, my failure. I want to use bricks, Lord, that look pretty. God says, no, show them the brick that's broken. God, let me show everybody the wall that, that looks nice. So when they look at me, they say, wow, he is so put together. She is so smart. No! Build with the burnt. Build with the burned ones. Build. I'm getting my workout in. Build. Rebuild. Brick by brick. Oh, Lord, this is tiring, though, Lord. I come on Sunday. And then I come on, then it's Monday. And sometimes, Lord, I don't want to carry this brick. Sometimes, God, it gets heavy having to carry this load. And I don't even know where it goes, but I just know that it goes. And look at that. This kid again. Oh, Lord Jesus. Here I go. And I got to carry this child. And man, some days I feel like I'm walking and my hands and my grip gets heavy. And sometimes I don't even see the end result. I just feel like there's days that I'm grinding and I'm just carrying heavy loads and I don't even know if I'm making progress. And that's why sometimes it takes someone else to come and say, yo, bro, I've been noticing things that have been changing. You're like, really, me? Because I just feel tired. I just feel frustrated. I just feel like, like I'm, I'm always heavy. And, uh, and that's why a girl said, no, I've been noticing. Girl, you've been putting your stuff together. You got your own place. You, you know, you're not just out there. You know, shout. You know, you. Come on, somebody. I noticed you're not, not like all, all the other ones. And, and it's like, you know, oh, Lord. And so you're just putting it back. And, and you feel like, oh, my Lord, this is crazy. And I'm breathing hard and it's not fake. I'm all, this is not for, for show, you know. And you're just like, I just, you know, I come on Sunday and I fast and then I go to connect group and then I got, bi I got Bible study and, and you know, I just, I'm just serving God, you know, going to work on Monday and, and you know, nope, can't go out to lunch with you because I'm trying to get out of debt, you know. And, I, and here I go and nope, nope. Can't go, out to eat, can't go out to eat with you because you ain't saved. Uh-uh, sorry. Uh-huh. And it's heavy again because another Valentine's Day I'm single. But, but you know what? Praise God. Pastor said better be single than with the devil. You know, so. <laughs> you know, so here I go. Praise God. All right. I had to let them go. Loved them, but they were no good. They always trying to get me to, to get, you know, you know what? And I'm like, I'm not doing that no more. And yeah, I'm just there. And I'm just, just building bricks. I'm just, just building. I'm just building. I'm just building. I'm just building. I'm just building. Brick. Dry. There are some days I wish someone else built my wall. I don't know I'm talking real to somebody. There are some days I wish I had someone else's bricks. But that's not your brick. Here's what I learned about bricks. Enjoy your bricks. Because they're yours. As beat up as they are, 
they're yours. As tore up from the floor up as they are. They're yours. Well, I wish, ah, these are my bricks. These are my bricks. And God is rebuilding something. It gets gooder. Because when the wall was completed, the scripture says in verse 16, watch this, watch this, watch this. Woo, Jesus. I feel the power of God. Oh, man, our prayer team must have been praying for me today. Sharabaka, Holy Ghost. When all our enemies heard about this, all of the surrounding nations became afraid. And they lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. The help of God. The story of Nehemiah is a picture of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says with the help of God, the Holy Spirit is known as the parakletos, the helper. And what this story is, is that the Holy Spirit is going to rebuild, restore, and revive. But you got to say, God, I'm going to do it with your help. I'm going to do it with you coming. And when God begins to help, the nations know this was not a work of man. This was a work of God. This was a work of God. God did this, and God will do it. And then what happens, watch me now. You look. Now, let's go to minister to somebody. Bring, bring the camera over here. Because there are some parts of your wall you wish were not there. But this is what makes your testimony real. This is what makes the miracle real. This is why I serve God. This is why I serve God's house. This is why I'm a man of God. This is why you're a woman of God. This is why you're a testimony of God's good work because God called you even with your bricks, with your broken self. Now, why does God do that? You wanna know why? Because God calls people that won't take credit for themselves. He calls people that are not perfect because they know that they were put together only by God. These are the real worshipers. These are the real, the ones that say, God, if it had not been for you, I would have lost my mind, my marriage, my children. I would have lost my salvation. I would have lost my life. Some of you wouldn't be alive right now if it wasn't for the hand of God who rebuilt your story. Say amen. Shout amen. God rebuilt me, rebuilt by God. Shout hallelujah. You see this year, 2021 is gonna be about God showing you how to, how to rebuild these bricks. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's discipleship brick by brick. 52 days for you might be 52 months. For some of you it might be 52 weeks. For some of you, it might be 52 years. I don't know. But I will tell you this, when it's complete, when it's complete, walls are protection. Your legacy will sit behind your testimony. Your legacy will be built on what God did through your life. And if he did it for my dad, he can do it for me. And if he did it for my grandpa, he can do it for me. If he did it for mom, he can do it for me. If he did it for my cousin, he can do it for me. If he did it for Freedom House, he can do it for me. If he did it in Costa Mesa, he can do it. For me. Anybody willing to be a testimony for the glory of God, give God a shout of praise tonight. Okay, I gotta finish this. I gotta finish this. Oh Lord Jesus, I gotta finish this. When Jesus, and I'm done here, when Jesus rose from the grave, this is heavy, don't miss what I'm about to tell you. He was buried, he was whipped, crown of thorns. 
But when he rose again, the Bible says that when Thomas didn't believe if he was Jesus, remember what he did? He showed him his hands, the scars in his hands, and he let him touch the scar. Jesus, watch me now, left the scars. <laughs> the Bible says that the same power of the Holy Spirit raised Christ. Let's go theology here. Bible college. Raised Bible he raised the, the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. And when the Holy Spirit was cleaning up the, the nails on his head and the blood off his body and it got to the scars on his hand, Jesus was like, leave those. Because someone's not going to believe and I got to tell them how real I am. Leave those scars. Woo! <laughs> Leave the scars, Holy Spirit. Because I got to show the world that I've been through something. I fought some giants. Leave the scars. Don't leave the wound, just leave the scars. Don't leave the hurt, just leave the scars. And some of you, you are in church right now and you got some scars. Some of you even got some wounds. God's gonna heal you and there might still be a scar, but that scar is not for you. It's to show somebody else, look, look, I too was broken and if God did it for me, he can do it. Look at my hands. Look at these hands. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise. Stand to your feet. Come on, somebody. Worship Him. Worship Him. Yes, Lord. Spirit move. We're ready for you to come and blow.
say, come and blow. Come on, Costa Mesa. We're worshiping together. So come and blow. I need you focused on this. Because it's the Holy Spirit who blows through the helper. Worship your God. Worship your Savior. Jehovah Rapha, your healer. Jehovah Tixkanu, he is present. Shama is here. Just because right here, yeah, yeah. With your eyes closed, some of you are sitting in the stones. You're sitting in the stones. God wants you to carry him now. Carry it on to completion. Carry it, complete what someone else didn't complete. Carry it on to completion. It's a good work. It's a good work. It's a good work. It's a good work. I know it gets heavy. I know it gets heavy. I, I'm, I'm carrying things. I've been carrying for a long time, but I'm going to carry on to completion. You're going to finish well you're going to finish well God's going to give you the endurance to finish well the endurance to finish well I'm prophesying to somebody right now who's weary and do not grow weary in doing good some of you are weary but that's why you come to church because we're all rebuilding together we're all rebuilding our part of the wall we're all rebuilding. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just open your eyes and look at me. If you could bring the camera right here, just showing all the bricks if you can. Here's what I want to say. For some of you, the brick by brick in this season is you partnering with the Holy Spirit of what to do with what is broken. See, oftentimes what we do is we Rolodex the burnt stones. But God wants to put it back together. And here's how God does it. And just please hear me, because God has a process to his healing. It's called discipleship. Okay, I know that's a heavy. Some of you are like, what does that mean, you know? <laughs> it basically means God wants to develop you to be a follower of Jesus. There is a pattern he has for your marriage, for your life, for your family, and it's in his word. And for some of you, the way you're going to be rebuilt this year is by beginning to apply God's game plan for your life. And again, I'm not, this is not a program. I'm telling you about God's word. For some of you, your road to discipleship is baptism this year. This has to be the year where you finally say, I'm going to dunk my past. I'm going to rise to new life. And I'm going to have a new game plan to be alive in Christ. Come on, Costa Mesa. Come on online. Come on, Fullerton. For some of you, your road to rebuild is to not just build a company, but build the kingdom. Ain't nothing wrong with building a company. Go and work. But you need to be about building God's kingdom eternal things because you don't know what to do with the bricks they only make perp only makes uh, sense in eternal concepts for some of you your road to rebuild and I'm just I'm just putting this out there is Bible college you got to learn his word more it's gonna be a connect group it's gonna be a godly friends it's gonna be finally watch me now planting yourself in a church of saying you know what I want to be a part of a community I don't want a church hop here and there I'm going to plant and if that's Freedom House welcome and if it's not find one but you need to plant yourself Psalm 92 13 those who are planted in the house of God will flourish amen and you got to begin to view yourself 
not as a visitor, but a part of the family. We're all rebuilding together. This is, you're not a guest at Freedom House. This is your home. And you got to start building relationships with your brothers and sisters in Christ. For others of you, your pathway to this is growth track. Get into growth track and take that step brick by brick. Find your purpose. Make a difference. For others of you is learning to be a godly mom. So you got to make friends with other godly moms. Amen. Men. Get into a men's group. So many men, they, they, they carry the burdens on their own. You got to get with other godly men. Quit just hanging around with the boys who, who they're not about building the kingdom. They're about building Saturday night. They're about just, you know, building the, the latest story. Be like, no, man, I'm about building my marriage. I'm about living for God. I'm not about, you know, just sin. I, I, you, know the, you know my old lady. Old lady, that's my wife. Come on now. I got no amens there. I got girl, the women clap, but not the fellas. All right. You know, the old ball and chain. No. That's my what? God, that's my good thing. Come on now. I'm going to live for God, not dysfunction. Say amen. Young people. Young people. Everybody talks about, you know, what's the move? What's the move? You want to know the move? Build God's way. That's the move in 2021. What's the move? Hey, what's the, this is the move. It's I'm going to build God's way. You know, I'm not going to live like the rest. Even if you come alone, I don't know who that's for. Even if none of your friends come and they even make fun of you on Sunday, they laugh now, but just wait till you rebuild your wall. And they'll be like, man, how do I have one? They'll be like, brick by brick. Say brick by brick. We're building God's kingdom brick by brick. Amen. Let me pray for you. Just bow your head across all campuses. Father in heaven. I lift up our church family. Here's my prayer for every heart that's weary. Every heart that's weary. Every heart that's weary. I know it's heavy. In fact, God doesn't hide that it's heavy. That's why he says don't grow weary because he knows we can grow weary. But you got to bring that weariness to God. The Bible says he gives strength to the weak that's why you got to get into worship man of God man of God get into worship get, get into the place get into your word draw strength from the Holy Spirit draw strength from the Holy Spirit so say this with me repeat this prayer to me say Lord Jesus say I now realize that you can use burnt bricks that you can rebuild what has been broken. So Heavenly Father, I yield my bricks to you. I humble my life to you. And I want to seek you with all my heart to rebuild, to restore, and to revive. Say, I'm going after everything you have for me, God. Say this, say, teach me, Lord your ways disciple me develop me and say this say and forgive me Lord say I repent for the days that I try to do it my way I want to do it your way I surrender to you my will and my ways I'm gonna be obedient to your word in Jesus name I pray Give God a hand clap because we love him. Amen. All right. Amen. <laughs> I cut my hand. I guess there's a message in that. Sometimes you get cut doing God's work. <laughs> Amen. Well, listen, next Sunday, you don't want to miss it. We're going to begin a new series all on relationships. It's going to be a powerful time. Marriage conferences on Friday. We'll have more information, but I'm telling you, it gets gooder and gooder. Be on the journey. Tell your neighbor, I'm a season ticket holder. Say, I'm a season ticket holder. Every week, God develops something, so stay connected with us. Uh, Costa Mesa, we love you. Pastor Brian, go ahead and lead Costa Mesa people to Jesus. I lead people to Jesus here at our Fullerton campus. Before you leave, let me show you this last verse. This is so important. Don't leave. This is the most important part of the service. Lend me just 90 seconds, and I promise you, I'll get you out of here, and you can go have a Valentine's Day lunch. It says, the Bible says this. It says, you declare with your mouth that Jesus is what? Lord. And if you believe 
in your heart that God did what? Raise him from the dead, you will be what? Saved, that's Romans 10, 9. Now everybody listen to me. The, 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 uh, 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 the best thing I can give you today is Jesus. The only way you, anything can be rebuilt is because of what Jesus did on the cross. And if you're here today, you need the forgiveness of sins, a fresh start, and you want to get right with God, I'd love to lead you in a prayer that I prayed nearly 25 years ago. I've never been the same. It's the prayer of salvation. Would you bow your just one last time? Just lend me this last moment. And if you're here in the building or you're watching online, you say, Pastor Josiah, that's me. I want to receive Jesus, my Lord and Savior. I want to get right with God. I want the forgiveness of sins. When I count to three, if that's you, just lift up your hand. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out of your seat. I'm not going to do anything weird. Just pray with you. And the reason I'm asking you to lift your hand is so I know who I'm praying for. As you're saying, Pastor Josiah, that's me. I want Jesus in my heart and I want to get right with God. Believers, pray with me all over the room. Most important part of the service. Here we go. Ready? One, you want Jesus in your life. Ready? Two, you want to say, Pastor, pray for me. Ready? Three, lift your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. Look at that. One hand, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. God bless you. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Who else? Come on. 13. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. If you're watching online, I believe that's you too. Let's all say this prayer together, especially with your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and change my life. Say, I believe you died on the cross for my sins, that you were buried, but you rose again and you live forevermore. Say, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Say, I repent of my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can live this life for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Come on, give God a clap. If you said that prayer, welcome to the family of God. The Bible says that all your sins are forgiven and you start brand new. Make sure to plug into church. If you're online, they're gonna put a link so we can send you a Bible. But if you're in the room, our prayer partners are in the front of the room and also in the back of the room. And if you need a Bible, we wanna give you a Bible so that you can walk in God's word in Jesus' name. Amen. Honey, come on up here. Let me dismiss you and pray, pray for you. Just say a little something to everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. We love the church. Well, first and foremost, happy Valentine's Day to Thank you. Thank you, honey. Love you. <laughs> I love you. And what a powerful Amen. message that was today. Can we all agree on that? Yes. So powerful. So amazing. And I feel like as you were talking about this, I, and like, man, that, that's, that's different for a Valentine's Day message. No, this is what we need for a Valentine's Day message on how God is going. You know what? Enjoy your spouse because God's rebuilding something. Amen. Enjoy wow. your family because God is rebuilding something. Don't look and wish for the yeah. other thing. Don't wish for the other grass on the other side of the street. Yeah. Thank God for what you have. Amen. Rejoice in it your and family. be joyful today yeah. in everything that God has given you. You Amen. are building your testimony. We're doing a great work. We can. Yes. If you're single, rejoice. Because you could be with the wrong person. <laughs> Just kidding. Lift your hands towards heaven. Let me bless you. Father, I bless your people. Make your face shine upon them. Be gracious to them. Establish them and give them shalom. Peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, we love you, Freedom House. If you're in the Fullerton building, we're going to open up these exit doors. If you can use both exits, it would be fantastic. God bless you. You're dismissed. We'll see you soon. We love you. Freedom House online family. Pastor Josiah Silver here. And I just wanted to take a moment to say how much... We love and value all of our online family that join us from really all over the world. It wouldn't be the same without you. I want to let you know that we're praying for you. We, we, we can't wait to see what God does in your part of the world. You're part of our Freedom House family. There are different ways for you to connect with us. Make sure to check out our connect groups that are via Zoom for our online family. You can also even serve and be part of our online digital dream team. And as always, we so appreciate your giving as you're sowing into this ministry. It allows us to bring you uh, the, the content that we do to all of our live uh, service equipment. So we appreciate your giving. Your giving is making a difference. It's changing the world. Stay connected with us. Hey, let me know where you're logging in from. Go to my social media, at Josiah Silva, at Marie Silva, my wife, or at Freedom House OC. Let us know where you're logging in from. We always love hearing from you. Love you, Freedom House family. God bless.